I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So today it's going to be a four card oracle you pick with a dyadic cross divination. Two different decks for that one. And at the end of that, I'm going to do some uh, draws on the royals right now. Just um, quick questions, maybe three or four questions on the royals. Okay, so I thought what I'd do right now is uh is do a four card oracle you pick with a dyadic cross finish and then also do another draw on the monarchy to see um if the monarchy will survive we'll kind of define that a little bit better later but for the first part of this i'm going to use the um grand lux tarot as the oracle cards and then the uh smith weight uh centennial edition deck for the uh, dyadic cross i love this grand lux tarot uh, they're great cards. They come in a good box. I've used them quite a few times, actually. And uh, like I said before, the instruction booklet is, is very useful and readable, which is kind of important. So there's that. Grand Lux Tarot by Cairo Marchetti. Now, these cards, let's see, are um, very fun to work with because they have such nice imagery on them. And they're nice and colorful, so they show up well for you to look at. And uh, so there's kind of a quick uh, look for you. That also helps me mix these cards up. Just to show you that you don't have to shuffle them just to get them uh, ready for uh, use. You can just spread them around. And now I'm pretty careful not to let these cards get it in an upside down position because I'm not very comfortable with uh, my divinations for reverse cards. Uh, if, it, if it happens, then I just uh, deal with it. But um, pretty much I try not to do that and just will uh, on rare occasion use clarifiers to uh, flesh out the meaning of a card that seems, uh, you know, not quite right. But uh, right now we're going to do the four card oracle. So you pick one, two, three, or four and um, see uh, how this works for you. You want to clear your mind. You want to calm yourself. You want to consider the um, question or questions that you're going to ask. Um, th the reading that I'm going to give is going to give you a direction of how your issue uh, is going to go or maybe going uh, more so than a yes, no answer. But you certainly can see if a yes, no answer works for you. So four cards for the first part of this oracle. One. Oh, wow. Two and three. That's interesting. And four. So we're done with these for now. So I'm going to put them off to the side where you can't see them. And uh, now you'll need to choose which of these cards is for you. Remember, you can stop the tape and, uh, and take your time, clear your mind, really consider your question. One, two, three, or four. One, two, three, or four, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. <laughs> so now we're going to put these off to the side and reveal them one at a time. If you pick number one, then your card is death. Now, look, calm down. Death is not death. Death is just the end, the end of a cycle. And um, it's interesting. This death is in this, uh, the mask that they typically use during the pandemic in uh, ye old ages. So, and we're going to that right now. So, hmm, interesting. So death means the end of a cycle. Something that's uh, been going on is gonna stop and something new is about to happen. So that's what you've got uh, in this. And if this were a yes, no card, this is no. The second card then is gonna be the chariot. And the chariot tells us that uh, things are moving forward. They're moving fast and they're not gonna be stopped. Uh, they're going to continue on, and it's your job to hold on and guide these opposing forces in the direction that uh, is going to best suit you. So for me, this is a yes card. Number three, then, is the Knight of Swords. And the Knight of Swords is a determined 
night. He's carrying truth. He's carrying rules. He's carrying justice. And he's going to bring it to the fight. There's no doubt. So if you pick this one, uh, these uh, strong issues uh, that have to do with uh, whatever is uh, your uh, question, um, this is going to be a yes. This is moving forward. You pick number four. Uh, we've got the four of cups. And uh, the four of cups is kind of, you know, um, an offer. Um, or maybe even wishing for something else to come uh, into the picture. And uh, so the four of cups really speaks to us of maybe being offered something that we don't want, wishing for something we don't have. And, you know, you might even look at it as not really appreciating what you do have, always looking for some little bit more. So I would say in this regard, this card is more of a maybe to me than it is a yes or a no. So we've got no, yes, a yes, and a maybe. So we're going to turn these back over and start the divination for this first card. And we're going to do that with the Smith Waite the Tarot deck. And uh, these cards are just great. They're your standard uh, tarot cards that you'll see all over the place. And uh, so they give us a very straightforward uh, answers. Um, they're easy to uh, determine what's meant by them, in, in my opinion. And um, I love the coloring of these cards. They say that these are more uh, aligned with the true intention of the artist uh, originally. So there we go. Wow, they're wanting to slip off the table. I don't know what that means, but uh, we'll see if um, if they bring us some, some answers here for these four uh, oracles. So we're going to shuffle them up. We'll do a little riffle shuffle or two. We'll cut the deck. And then we'll, and they're really jumping out to get out of my hands to get going, or I'm just in a particularly clumsy mood today. You can decide. <laughs> so let's just do this because this seems a little easier right now. And uh, we'll see what these cards can tell us about death. Number one, if that was your card, death. Wow, that's scary to say, isn't it? But don't be scared. It's just meaning that something's coming to an end. And it, sometimes uh, that's a very good thing. Um, to put something behind you and get started on something new, if that seems to be um, the issue that you're working with. Okay, so for death, we're going to take six cards. That'll be one, two, actually we'll take five, three, four, and five. Yeah, because I forgot that we're going to use that first oracle card as a signifier card. Okay, let's put these over here to sort of work on that energy. And we'll start out with the signifier of death for this uh, divination right here. So like I said, this is the end of a cycle. It's stopped. This is it. Whatever the problem was, you know, you can uh, say that this is the end of it and we're about to start into something else. But there's a challenge to that. And the challenge to that is the Ace of Wands, which is that big offer of plans of moving forward. So just like I said, when you stop something, something else is going to start. And that is the challenge to this uh, stop. So it may be that um, that you don't see yourself um, moving forward just yet. Maybe you don't feel like you're ready to go forward or you don't see the opportunity that's here, but it is there. So just take a breath, take a beat, go within yourself, close your eyes and consider your issue from some sort of a calm, calm, place, imagine in your head what would be the best uh, next step for you, and then see if you can't put that into motion. But uh, So uh, death, challenged by, let's get going. The basis of this reading then is the Empress, and the Empress is um, the all-fruitful. She's almost like Mother Nature. I mean, she just has everything available to her, and this is telling me that you need to realize that you are your Empress. You are the one who's loaded with everything you need to make this issue uh, work for you. So don't be afraid. Just get it done. In the past for this reading, oh, I just said I don't like reverse cards, and here you are being a reverse card. Shame on you. Anyway, so this is the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups, when it's upright, is, um, is someone who's really in charge of their emotions. They're in charge of their passions. This queen is, is staring at this cup and really determinedly uh, deciding uh, what to do. 
and you notice this little uh, uh, cherub uh, under the uh, throne here with a little fish in his hand. So this has uh, pretends some sort of uh, a surprise, but we got the card in reverse. So now I have to decide what does this card mean in reverse. If upright, it means in charge of your emotions and uh, ready to um, uh, move your passionate issue forward. I would say that this Queen of Cups tells us that it's sort of the, uh, it's not often these cards really mean the opposite of what they uh, uh, mean when they're upright, but I think this does mean that. I think this Queen is confused. I think this Queen is uh, not wanting to um, let go of her emotions. You, If you were in this position, you'd really be hanging on to that cup for dear life so you don't spill it out, but it's almost futile. It's going to come out. So for me, that's what this is. The Queen of Cups really trying to hold on to those emotions, and uh, but you've got to realize you can't. You've got to let go because this has to happen so this can start to occur. And you've got everything you need to make it happen in the best way possible. Just please believe that. Now, the um, sky for this reading then is the hangman also in reverse. I must have, uh, wow, well, we just have to go with it. So the hangman, when he's in, a, in, the, uh, in the correct position, which is in fact when he's upside down. So that's not confusing, is it? Um, this means stopping to uh, look at something from another perspective, maybe being forced uh, to do that. Um, and, but in this case, with the card reversed, I would say, gosh, this is difficult for me. I would say the hanged man in reverse. This is showing me that you can come out of the fog. You can, you can figure this out. You, can, you have determined uh, how this is going to look, and you're ready to step down uh, out of that position and uh, and do something about it. That's what this says to me because it looks to me like this hanged man has, has worked himself around. He's getting a foot down. He's going to work this leg out. He's wriggling out of the, the binds behind him. He's got an idea and it's an inspired one. And so I'm going to say that this is telling us, look, we've taken a minute and now we're ready to do something else. Oh, is this another reverse card? No, this should be upright. And I know that it's upright and I'll tell you why. Let's turn this one over like this. In these cards, on the back of them, if this little uh, uh, leaf is ahead of this, uh, this is the artist's uh, signature, Pamela, Pamela Coleman Smith. Pamela, if this leaf is ahead of the signature, this card is upright. But when this leaf is pointing behind that signature, it's reversed. So that's how you can tell by not even turning the cards over whether they're reversed or upright. And I had forgotten that until this very minute. So that was the reverse king, uh, um, a hangman with an inspired idea. This one, and look how good I'm going to be because I know this is upright. This is going to be the queen, uh, not the queen, I'm sorry. This is the nine of pentacles. And the nine of pentacles is having everything you need. You know, it's really flush with uh, the uh, the choices that are required, even a little extra, because this uh, falcon represents, you know, what would be the sport of the day. I mean, you wouldn't have a, a falcon to feed and to train and to deal with if you weren't really flush with cash. So this tells me in this reading uh, that it's going to work out very much to your advantage. But just uh, let's go over it again, because this is as far as I'm going to go with this. This will be the diet at cross finish. So it was a hard stop, uh, challenged by get moving get this plan going you've got everything you need get off the throne and, and because you can't hold this position forever and in fact the reversed hangman verifies that that you will have an inspired idea if you clear your mind and then as a matter of fact it will probably be the best thing uh, that you've done so that no turned right into a yes and you know what i'm going to fix these doggone upside down cards right now so that was, I'm going to take this card and put it that way so that you know that this no can become a yes. Okay? Remember that. So we're going to put these back into the deck and we're going to work on the second uh, oracle uh, right here. The second oracle, you remember, was the chariot. And the chariot tells us that uh, this issue is moving forward. And it's your job to get it under the control and take it the way you want it to go. So let's uh, shuffle these up. And don't be any more reverse cards in here. You hear me? Uh, that's too distressing for me. So uh, let's get it going. So the second card, if that's what you chose, is a yes card moving forward. Yes card moving forward. Yes card moving forward. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, take uh, five cards out of here. We're going to go, okay, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, you guys stay over here. 
and soak up some thought on that issue. The chariot moving forward swiftly and that you need to be in charge of it. So we know this card will be upright uh, in the correct position because why this little, little flower right here. So the challenge to everything moving forward or this issue moving forward quickly is victory. So the challenge to moving forward is victory. So I've got to tell you that uh, many times when you think you've come to the end and it's a great big celebration, it may be that you got there a little too soon. So that's how this feels to me. The challenge is victory. Don't let victory fool you into thinking that you've uh, finished this challenge. The base of this reading then, again, it's just amazing to me how the cards, once they get hot, they seem to want to come back and tell me uh, several stories. But this Ace of Wands uh, is a big offer of planning, of moving forward, of getting something done. And uh, this hand is even shaking some of the leaves loose off of that, uh, that uh, wand. So in the, in the basis of this reading is just the, the verification that this is, is yes, going to come forward and it all looks pretty good. The past of this reading is the King of Cups. And the King of Cups, much like the Queen of Cups, is very much in charge of his emotions. Um, he is the king who is going to make a compassionate decision for the best interest of all those involved. And that's how this came uh, to us. This came to us uh, as a passionate, kind of a definite uh, decision. Uh, in the sky of this reading is the King of Pentacles. And the King of Pentacles, again, is a very pleasant card. You know, this is being in, totally in charge of your value, of being able to uh, move this idea uh, um, uh, at, your, at your will because you are the one who can make it happen. Now, the future uh, potential outcome for all of this, then, is the, um, oh, well, that's not that's not good. That's the Five of Swords. And the Five of Swords tells us that, you know, you may deal with some betrayal in this regard. Um, there may be reason to think that someone has not been dealt with fairly. And this is a very gleeful person who is scooping up these swords. Um, I don't know if that's you. I don't know if that's someone you're dealing with. But I'm going to tell you that it's another case where the uh, yes card can turn into something less than a yes, depending on your actions. You have complete control over what's going to happen here. So it's moving forward rapidly. Don't let a false finish fool you. You've always had the uh, uh, motion, the intention, the power to, to move this forward. You uh, have been, it's been considered with some passion, with some thought. Um, the value is there. And that's the, you want to uh, consider that. And then uh, just be aware that there could be some misgiving at the end, but you still end up with, with the bounty. You still end up with the loot. Okay? So that's the second card, if that's what you chose. That one stays a yes. Put these cards back in the pack and get going with the third card, if that's the one you chose. The third card then... Is the Knight of Swords, and the Knight of Swords is a very determined knight of truth, of rules, of regulations, of, of justice. This knight is bringing this. Doesn't mean he can't get knocked off, but uh, this is a yes card, and uh, this knight is very determined to see his uh, his work done. Didn't shuffle them, but uh, we're going to take them just like that. And so we're going to do five cards: one, two, three, four. Put these back together, guard that stack. The Knight of Swords definitely uh, um, uh, determined to make this happen. Okay, so the uh, challenge to that then, well, that's a good challenge. It's the Three of Cups, and the Three of Cups is celebrations. Uh, so these are uh, collaborations that have gotten together to say this is a passionate issue and we made it, we did it. But how is that a challenge? to the truth coming forward. I would say it's again, it could be a false celebration. It could be uh, that you could celebrate too soon. Let's see what the base of the reading is. The base of this reading then, ah, death again. So death is how this started. This started with a stop. This, uh, th this um, tells us that we need to understand that something has to end for something else to begin. I wonder if this knight hasn't uh, given the death blow to the issue, and that's why uh, some new um, uh, celebratory uh, uh, feature has come forward. In the past of this, though, is the moon, and the moon is all about secrets being revealed. You know, uh, 
nothing can stay hidden forever. It can stay hidden for a lifetime, but probably not forever. And so the uh, base, uh, the past, the past of this uh, issue were that the secrets uh, did leak out and and get things moving after this hard stop. That's interesting. In the sky, then, for this reading is the King of Cups again. Amazing. Uh, King of Cups, just like I said, he is in complete control of the passion, the emotion, the power of the uh, of the of, of of the situation, the emotional power of the situation. So that's what we want to aim for. We want to aim for keeping this under uh, under our control, under our emotional control. And then the likely outcome for all of this is the King of Wands. And the King of Wands, again, is just being in charge of all that planning, all that motion, all that forward movement. Um, uh, you're going to um, make this happen. Uh, that's the, the overall situation here. So I think that's a good read. Now, the final card is the uh, Four of Cups. Uh, either uh, being made an offer of something that you don't necessarily want or almost praying for something else and not really um, um, giving uh, these cups, these emotion, this this uh, passion, uh, maybe it's due. So let's make sure we get a couple of shuffles in here for this. And I'll split the cards. And then we'll see how this ends up. Okay. I'm going to take five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've got the um, Four of Cups telling us, hey, I want something else. Or this seems to, this is definitely uh, wishing for something else. The challenge to that then is uh, the Page of Wands. And the Page of Wands, you know, he's bringing some plan. He's bringing some action. He's bringing some movement to this issue. And so uh, hoping for this uh, may be um, stalling or, or challenged by the fact that this is moving forward. It's a slow roll. It's starting to move forward with this page. He's bringing it to court for consideration, but it's going to move forward. So I would say yeah, understand what you've got and get on, get on board with making uh, something happen here. The uh, base of the reading is the Ace of Swords. That's another great big offer of truth, of justice, of power, of rules, of regulations. This is telling us that uh, the basis of all of this is that there are rules to go by. And when you follow the rules, usually you're following, you're following the justice. The past of this reading, then, is the King of Swords. And the King of Swords just kind of verifies this, that, yeah, we have been in control of our situation. We've been the one... Uh, demanding the justice, demanding the uh, the uh, adherence to uh, the law or the rules that are going forward. And in the sky of this reading is the fool. And the fool is simply the the beginning a new uh, a new journey. And so yeah, get off your your duff, quit wishing for something else, recognize that this is moving forward, and get started on the journey. That's all you have to do. Take that first step forward. Trust that uh, you're going to be moving in the right direction. And then the final outcome for this is the Queen of Swords. You were the King of Swords. You may be a little diminished uh, going forward for whatever reason it was, but you're still very much in charge of what's going on. And this is a very uh, uh, heavy in Swords uh, reading. So I'd say this is uh, heavy in justice and truth and honor. Um, it will work out. It will work out. Okay. So that's what we have for these cards. If that was your... Uh, you know, those were your picks. I hope that worked out for you. Now we're going to go right into the. Um... Um, we're going to use for that again this touchstone tarot, which I really love. And uh, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to ask some questions about the future uh, of. I, I was thinking the future of the monarchy. But I think I'm going to try something new here. I think I'm going to go through some quick questions um, for several of the royals that are causing all these issues right now. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, so we'll shuffle these up. And I'm going to do a one-card draw 
for the issue that comes to mind. I'm thinking of it right now uh, as we speak. This wasn't planned. And uh, and then I'll, I'll state the issue. Um, I'll hopefully uh, ask for divination in the cards. We'll take a one card uh, answer. And then if we need to, we'll do three more cards for clarification, but no more than that. And if at any time with the three card clarification, in other words, if the first card clarifies it for us, it will stop. If the second card clarifies it, we'll stop. If the third card helps to clarify it, we'll stop there. We won't do any more than three cards. But uh, so I want to know, is the future of the monarchy secure? And let's just say the short term future of the monarchy. The monarchy past the current uh, monarch. Is that secure? Um, can we expect that everything is going to work out uh, for the uh, benefit of the monarchy? And this is the Five of Cups. And the Five of Cups uh, is, is, is a yes with some, some loss. You know, this, um, this has to be Charles. It looks like he's being left to clean up um, something that was there before. So this is a yes. The future of the monarchy is secure in Charles, who will be there to help clean things up. Okay, that was the first question. The second question I want to ask these cards has to do with uh, Harry and William. And listen, that just came off the top of my head right now. There was no planning. I'm just trusting that spirit is guiding me to the correct uh, questions. So Harry and William. Harry and William. Okay. Will there be in the short term future? And I'm not sure how to define short term. I would guess, um, you know, in the matter of, of um, six months to a year, in the short term future, in the short term future for Harry and William, will they be able to mend this rift? The card to answer that is the Hierophant. And the Hierophant is not the monarchy. The Hierophant is the government. The Hierophant is the government. And so the government is going to be the winner in this issue between William and Harry. Of course it is. It could only be the government. Um, because the monarchy follows the government, as a matter of fact. The monarchy invites the uh, prime minister to, to establish a government, but then the monarchy steps back and actually takes a few steps behind the government because the government, in, I suppose, uh, and I don't know this for a fact, this is, these are my feelings, the government represents the will of the people. And in this case, where we had the monarchs in the past, we're forcing the people into uh, a situation or a direction. The monarchy of modern times in this, in this country anyway, in England, um, follows the will of the people. So will the rift between Harry and, uh, and William be, um, be satisfied? And this tells me that the government will be satisfied. So you know what? I'm going to ask for uh, clarifiers on this. So I'm going to put this right here, and we're going to start with one more card to see if this can clarify for us somehow uh, about how uh, this uh, rift between Harry and William uh, might be satisfied. We'll start with one card and hope that that does the divination. The card I picked for that is the chariot. Well, the chariot uh, indicates to us that things could be moving on uh, quickly, and uh, but that doesn't do it for us. That doesn't do it for us. The uh, I would say that if the government is going to be the winner in this, it may be that the best thing for the government is for this uh, rift to heal. But let's see if we can get one more card that makes it a little bit clearer for us. You know, something makes me want to take this card right here. And uh, the Four of Swords is, well, that's very interesting to get this card because while the Chariot uh, is telling us to uh, that uh, a swift um, end to this is best for the government, this Four of Swords is contradicting that and saying that take time to rest and gather yourself and be clear about what the next movement's going to be. So it could be that the government wants this to, to uh, satisfy, but uh, the better judgment is to just let time uh, work its uh, magic. Okay, I'm going to do one more card. This will be the last card on this issue. Harry and William, will um, this rift be satisfied in the, uh, in the, uh, in the future, uh, six months to a year? This card right here was peeking out. 
And this is a Six of Cups. I love this. This is a wonderful way for this reading to end. Because what the Six of Cups is, the Six of Cups is telling us that it's remembering the way things were in the past. When there were better times. When it, when it was a happy union between siblings. And uh, so I would say that in the next six months to a year, this rift will, in fact, be satisfied. And uh, that family will start to come together. And we have to understand that the family coming together and the, what's best for the government, although they're certainly linked, they're not exactly the same uh, decision. Okay, so I like that. I like that very much. What could be the next uh, issue for this? You know what? Let's jump to the new baby. Let's jump to the new baby that's coming. Let's jump to Harry and Megan's next child. Harry and Megan's next child. And I don't know why I thought that would be a good question to ask, but let's see what happens. Harry and Megan's next child determining factor in uh, helping uh, uh, mend this uh, issue. One card. The devil. The devil is, um, you know, falling in with your lesser intentions. Letting uh, um, bad intentions uh, rule uh, the day. Ugh, I just don't see that as an answer at all so let's let's keep going uh we'll do no more than no more than three cards and the question is will the new baby of harry and megan help to mend the rift between uh, william and harry and the card we got for that was the devil one more card and see what that tells us the hanged man and so this is just telling us that looking at something from another perspective uh is uh, what's going to be necessary. Doesn't help. Another card is going to be justice. So I'm going to say justice will determine uh, what um, happens. And I've got to go for a third card. We'll take it from right here. Third card is the Ten of Wands and bundling up all those issues and moving forward. So it's just not clear. It's just not clear at all. Um, this may be an issue that uh, is going to have is going to linger on beyond the next six months or twelve months, and uh, and so that's why we got this confusing pull, because if it won't be mended in that period of time, then the devil is in the details, and uh, it could be uh, several folks uh, lesser intention that keep it going, and probably the counsel for them would be to stop, and look at this from each other's point of view, and then the the better thing they could do is also consider what is just for both parties. And then the final thing would be to do is to pick up your bundle of burdens and move forward. So that was the double uh, reading for your Oracle cards. And then also knowing a few questions about the Royal Family. Hope that was it interesting for you at the very least okay so that was the reading for today i hope you got something out of it if it didn't uh, if the oracles didn't ring true for you maybe come back to it later and uh and see if it works for you later or it, 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 you just may need to pass on this one but those uh royal um questions uh, should have been interesting for you i hope they were my name is Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for coming and seeing this uh, video. I really do appreciate it. If you're not doing anything tomorrow, come on back by because you know I'll be going somewhere and you can come too. So, ciao for now.